This, this is the smallest boring bar in the world. It's roughly the size of one of the hairs on your head. The part we're making today goes into a mechanical watch, and the diameter on the front of it requires a perfect concentricity, which is why I decided to use a boring bar. Now, I've broken five of these just by touching them. I even had one stuck in my finger for like two weeks before I noticed it was absolutely disgusting. So how's that possible? How can you have a tool so small if you touch it, it'll break, but yet still is strong enough to cut metal? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in today's video. And by the end of today's video, you are gonna know how to use the world's smallest boring bar. So the way we're gonna locate our tool in today's video is actually really insane. We're gonna put a camera in our main spindle. It's called the Perfect Zero System, and it is really crazy how good this actually works. So if you look at the end of this pin here, you're gonna see a really small hole. And that's what we're gonna to use to align our spindle. And in a second, what you're gonna see is actually gonna blow your mind. All right, we're gonna throw our tool in there and we're gonna send it to X, O, Y, as zero. So I got my tool called up and now I'm jogging it forward. And if you look right here on my monitor, you can actually see this tool appear as it moves towards the camera. And this is what I think is really crazy. That giant hole in the center is that tiny hole that you saw on the end of that pin. So now, we need to create the biggest circle possible to get the best center of our spindle. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move our target a little off center, and that'll give us a bigger sweep so we can really locate the center of the spindle as accurately as possible. And I will go over 5 thou, 10 thou, 15 thou, 20 thou. So once we move that off center a little bit, we're gonna go into auto calibrate. Drop this down a little bit, and we're gonna put our circle as best we can with our eyeballs right in the middle of that little circle. Once I click on it, all I have to do is jog my C axis on my main spindle around, and this will spin the spindle, and it should create a perfect circle. Okay, determined center, here we go. Boom, right there. So we just located the exact center of our spindle. So now all we have to do is jog our tools up and align them with that coordinate, and we will be perfectly on center. All right, so now, as we jog this forward, it's pretty cool. You're gonna see this boring bar kind of like appear and come to life on the camera. So now all we have to do is jog our tool down in Y and then go over an X and get it as close to on center as we can get it. And that right there is it. And yes, you could say that you're just eyeballing this, but when you zoom in, you can actually see the scale we're working in here. So I'm gonna go into Y and I'm actually gonna move this 10 thousandths and I'm gonna move it back. So even moving it one thou, right? Like look how far this is. So you are guaranteed getting this within at least a quarter of a thousandth. Cause if I even go down to tenths and I move it one tenth, two tenths, you can see how far off it really is moving, which is insane, right? I mean, you're working at the smallest possible scale. So when you look at my screen right here, that is the end of that boring bar. That is just a little bit bigger than a human hair. So now that we've got our boring bar perfectly located, we're gonna go into our offsets and just hit zero on X and Y. And that's it, we're done with our boring bar. Okay, so there is one more thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about when it comes to making a boring bar this small work. And that is that it's not just about being on center. You also need to have your tool perfectly straight. So you want your boring bar and your axes of motion to be perfectly in line with each other. So how do we do that? So typically when I'm working on a lathe and I put a circular tool into a tool holder, I will slowly wiggle the tool holder and tighten the set screw on its flat until I feel the play come out of the holder. And I've always assumed that that's straight enough. The truth is, is when you're working on this scale, that actually won't work well enough. You need to get an alignment tool from Horn that has a flat on it, and that alignment tool goes perfectly into your tool holder, like so, and you tighten it down, just like you would any other insert. And you can use either an indicator or the camera to line this up, but you wanna make sure when you move X up and down that that is perfectly in line with it. Then, from that point, you could put your boring bar in and locate it like I just showed you. All right, so yeah. That's pretty much everything I could think to tell you and explain to you about putting an 8,000 boring bar in your machine. The only question you might be having is, how do you check something like this? Well, the answer is, is that the best, the most revered, the most intellectually sound inspector ever in the whole world, bro. So anything else to talk about? No, not really, actually. I think that's it, yeah, that is it. 
That's everything I put myself through and learned the hard way so you don't have to by watching our videos. So if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. I'm sure right here is like the last video we posted or something. Right here is a playlist, pretty cool. Also subscribe because you know, we make video content like this all the time. Yeah, see ya, have a good day, bye.